for immunity arising from the agreement. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Boring? Here. Mr. Blaine? Here. Mr. Robinson? Here. I right, could begin a motion for the acceptance of the minutes of August 21st, 2024, and the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the August 21st, 2024, regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. Second. Mr. Boring? Yes. Mr. Blanton? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Also, a motion for the acceptance of the minutes for September 4th, 2024, for the board regular meeting of the board of trustees. I'll make that motion to accept the minutes of September 4th, 2024, for the regular board, for the regular meeting of the board of trustees. I will second. Mr. Valerie? Yes. Mr. Bland? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. A motion for the acceptance <laughs> of the invoices to be accepted. The invoices for a follow of August? Yes. Make a motion that we accept all invoices as presented by the fiscal officer for the month of August. I will second. Mr. Walrick? Yes. Mr. Bland? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. All right. I think we can have a chair for four. Okay. Well, thank you. Good evening. This is Tim McElroy of the department. Yes. That's your last month. I'm going to read it here. I'm going to read it. Some questions on it, uh, I'll get to that. Um, so in August 2024, we get a 313 run, 244 of those were dispatched, 69 of those were self initiated details. Uh, as far as service exchange, there's 92 times Miami Township car requested outside of Miami Township. 82 of those times they did go, 10 of those were disregarded in route. In exchange, 124 times the county cars were requested in two Miami Township. 63 of those times they were sent, 61 of those times they were disregarded. Uh, during the month, we took five criminal reports and six non criminal reports. We also took six auto accidents. Now, the uh, elephant in the room, obviously, is that we've had even been shooting on this Miami Road. Road. Or subject was killed. The uh, I can assure you that the county, our department, is throwing all resources at it. That night, we had officers respond, including pulling officers from different townships to assist. Uh, single hundred man officers, um, and of course, we pulled in officers early from the first shift to come uh, an hour early and from that shift to assist also. Our CIS and our residence technicians also responded in close to that uh, incident. And I can tell you that my office is actually across the hall from getting in the CIS, and I was formerly in CIS myself. So, good relationships. It's being worked as a investigation in progress. I think it's been for two months, obviously, other than what's been released in the media, but it is being worked. I guess hot and heavy would be the, uh, the right phrase for it. I'm just sure it's being investigated those things. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, I don't want to be critical, but I'm going to be critical. Okay. <clears throat> that is a homicide. Mm -hmm. That is one of the most serious incidents that we can have in this township or anywhere. That property is on East Miami River Road. Mm -hmm. Anyone looking at it can see there's a hill behind it that's nothing but woods. For thousands of people. Each property on East Miami River Road goes up the hill. When we respond to a shooting like that, we have no idea who shot it, I assume. Am I correct? Well, once again, I won't get into it, but it came out as a shooting. Some witnesses had driven by. Okay. So uh, somebody, somebody, somebody uh, injured it. Uh, okay. The point I'm getting at is we don't know who shot, where they're at, but we assume they could be in the woods. Or anywhere. If we had that many officers on the scene, 
Gum Run Road is directly next to it, closest intersecting street within 500 feet. Any officer in that area goes up Gum Run Road, knows there's a private development that goes up off Gum Run Road on the hill. I personally live on that private development. The murder, the man that was murdered, his property comes up in a flex mine. No officer for five hours. And I heard there was up to 30 officers down there and SWAT. Not one officer came up that private lane and advised us to stay in our house, to sit there and watch for anything. These homes on that hill already have a tree on it. So it is a fine line, like this wall. The trees go to the East Miami River. This is all open green space for four or five homes on five acre lots each. You could see for a uh, hundred of feet each way. That would have been a prime spot for an officer to sit, to observe, or to even notify the residences. And we had not one single response from anyone but chatter from cell phones from people in the area telling us what was going on. It was very troubling. They had a drone in the air. The drone had to see our property, probably saw me out walking around curious after a while, after I locked the doors and stayed inside for three hours. No one called us. No one showed up. I notified every property owner on that hill. Not any property owner on that hill saw an officer. And I think that is absolutely terrible. And I'm not going to criticize, but that was a flaw. An officer, that was an escape route. What if that gentleman or whoever could have been in the woods would have came up the hill, took one of us hostage, took our vehicle, could have went down the private lane and up down the road to West Buffalo to Bay Dom. Guys, we're talking 300 feet of woods. There's a dead man. There's my lady. Can you see the concern of me? I can. I can't say that the response, I can say the response was pretty quick to the, uh, the area. As you said, there was also a spot, which I failed to mention, and drones up in the air. Um, but I can tell you a little inside baseball that with the, one of the witnesses that you're by had the subject going into a, a particular building down there. So I saw it was called, and that's why the entrance was made in that, that area. Uh, so I'm not saying it. Uh, completely exonerates us from going up and having an officer go up into your neighborhood as well, just for this, as an in case. That would be something I'll, I'll discuss uh, with the officers, with the supervisors. But I can tell you that there was a concentration of where they believed that the subject had gone to uh, due to some witness accounts. I'm yeah, not I... saying that that wasn't so that we should have had somebody up there. But as you point out, we did have drones in the area. We were watching the area uh, during the whole. Yeah, I saw the drone. But at eight o'clock when it got dark, <laughs> my phone rings and goes, suspect has been apprehended, the police have got him. SWAT's been released. Who said that? It was a neighbor, a phone okay. call. That's how rumors go. Mm -hmm. So naturally I call on my neighbors to relax, they got the guy. <laughs> That's all bogus, they still don't have him. So this gentleman claims a police officer told him they had someone. Well, I can tell you that our officers didn't really get him. I don't know where he got that information. That wasn't from the police officer because we didn't have him. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We didn't have him. Then I hear it on the next day. Well, we don't have nobody. Someone's on the loose. Let's see. Yeah, we still have one person talks to another person, talks to another person, we go over right. the store chain. Exactly. But the point I'm getting at is I felt an officer should have came that close, 300 feet. They know a home's up there. They know a lane's up there. They've been there before. Years ago, there was a guy that stole a car from Green Township was in the woods next to me. The police came up there. So they're quite aware that this is an open green space. And I think it was a lack of judgment on the sheriff's department personally. And well, if you could, please look into that. I will look into the charge. see what the judgment was. Why did yeah. have an, uh, an and maybe it's just a body. Yeah, that's what I'll check. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I just, I just got one question since uh, Mr. brought that up. I'm, and I know they set up the perimeter. Mm -hmm. So the perimeter had to be not 300 feet out, or they would have been up on this property. So it had to be just in the vicinity, I think. 
So I'm not too how far the perimeter was. Yeah. I can't tell you that without having the uh, SWAT team here or somebody here that uh, could. So the SWAT wasn't set up the perimeter? No, but they would have, they would have served it on how far if they wanted that for the inner uh, outer perimeter and the inner perimeter, but I don't know how far they took the outer perimeter last year. Okay. I was just curious because it seems there would be at least 300 to get the outer. Well, trust me, I believe that they thought they had the subjects in the uh, building. Right. Well, it's nice. scooted quick after the incident. Right. And they were there on top of it to be quick, so he was just scooter in and out the back right away. In the back is my way. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. Any more questions for the lieutenant? Okay. Do, they, do they have a system that they can notify the residents in that vicinity? That's not usually, it's, I'll be honest, that's used for uh, missing and endangered. Uh, not usually used for uh, homicides that I know of or those kind of critical incidents. There's definitely something I can look into, but I'm not, I'll just there's not a system for that now. Yeah, uh, because I know the, our crews the dispatch for the shooting, they stay, what was our normal procedure, they stay. Um, and waiting for the area to be clear so they can go in. Well, I was there you know, over the stage talking to them. They got the all clear to go get the victim. And it wasn't seen as not, I didn't feel the scene as secure if they're going up in front of this house with a victim laying there and they're pulling it up. And police officers were going to have to bring in looking for this shooter. Um, because we had more for the past that our guys were put on, but when they hear all clear, they went in. I, I, I have a concern. I, you know, I worry about the residents, or definitely worry about our people. You know, it's not something we have every day out there. Uh, and uh, I don't want to see it yeah, I mean, that's, you know, they're not aware of it. Yeah. Of course, the home. And then I, I don't know if you know about this morning around 30, you know, Dr. Lesson. Al? No. You know, uh, you know, you know, nine police officers there that arrested the subject in a house that he was armed. That's no one here this morning. So, you, you know, you start putting two deals together, what's going on out there? Just, I love it. I can tell you, the detectives in the, uh, Detectives and I believe they also need some units from Reno for out late last night. We're following up on this investigation. I don't know if that's the same way you're talking about it or not, but they were just they were out free late last night. That might be all right. Any more questions for the lieutenant? All right, I'll take thank you. All right, administrators for four, Mr. Brett. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank the lieutenant for um, for keeping me informed so I can keep the board up to date with what was going on. I appreciate all that. Um, I heard terms from him, Mercy Sergeant Carney. So, uh, Sheriff's Department did a good job of keeping us informed as to what was going on, and we appreciate that. I'd like to be the first to welcome Wayne Miller to his dinner. Um, thank you. So we'll hear from him later on. Uh, Jordan Road, we talked about the tank fill last meeting. Uh, the advertisements are going to be in favor for the engineering. Um, same for the, if we move on to the parking lot at uh, West Park, the additional parking. Um, when I wrote this, we were still waiting on the final legal counsels to exchange paper. And it would have this thing. Then as could be, you could read through it as many times they passed it back and forth. But they settled on that yesterday about noon. Uh, the projects in the paper and being advertised. Both these projects are on our website as well. I'm going to the school district meeting next Tuesday because you had authorized me to execute that agreement. We're going to get that executed next Tuesday. So moving right along with the water on Jordan Road. Um, one issue that I, I'm going to call myself out on because I think this is something we haven't done a good job at for our, our people, as we've got a lot of nuisance complaints. Um, you know, Trustee Robinson is 
has been by here twice this week and gone out and taken some pictures on his way around and he got me some addresses and things. We're we're trying to write letters and we're trying to get people to do things. So I want to thank Kim Day because last week she got so upset with um, with our representative from the Hamilton County Zoning Department that she called in four days in a row just to get a letter written on a property that you started on four years ago over on Zion Road. And um, but honestly, I don't think he'd have done anything if she hadn't called in four days in a row. She did that on her own. So thank you, Kim, for uh, stepping up and doing that. Otherwise, I don't think he'd have got out there yet. <laughs> um, so we're spending a lot of time on nuisance properties, and we have some other things that I think should be more pressing and things that are more important. And I think you're going to mention door locks later on, uh, employee policies and things like that. So I'm going to suggest again that uh, we revisit hiring an expert to help with this. Not to do all of them, but just the ones that we can't handle when we get overloaded like this and we're falling behind. Um, I talked with Ed Linden Schmidt, who does Please and the Village of Addison. He's uh, still interested in doing it. His price is still the same, it's $25 an hour. Uh, no benefits, no nothing. Uh, <clears throat> if we can handle it in house and it's simple, we'll handle it in house, but it's going to keep dragging out and we're not getting the, the things done that the folks deserve. I think we should at least bring that back up and talk about it. The problem I have with that is we have Jason Pastor, Ed can't cite people for the vehicles. That's what we got going on in Bridgetown, or Zion, on the entire road. He can't cite for them, and Jason Pastor can't cite for them. He works for Jason in the, in the villages. and um, But Jason <laughs> works for us. He's, right. our, he's our representative for the engineers. Yeah. So he can't do any of that. No, but he he feels well, like he can get Jason to be more responsive for us. I mean, it's starting to it seems like it, Mr. Brest bringing up that between himself and staying with some others is we're spending a tremendous amount of time to try to motivate Jason Bestor um, and on some of those properties and then the things that we can't handle and that they could handle, um, it would be nice to have someone that can dedicate their efforts and just try to stay on top of all of that, on top of Jason, uh, on top of the things we can and we can't, can't say. Um, and everybody's spending a, a lot of time and, and resources on, on this where we have some big, big ticket items, some big issues that um, I think you know, time could be better spent on right? just a thought. And he would and he would just be on the as needed basis. He understands that. You know, we can get him to help us out and catch up. He's already get a county employee that is assigned to our area to do his job. Well, there, there are things that we're trying to get done that aren't I mean that's that's tough. Well that's tough for us to explain to our residents. Uh, except what, what Ed will be able to do is do the things that the county zoning won't take care of. So I know, I that. You know, he can take care of the, some of the junk motor vehicle things on the lots. You know, junk motor vehicle what? On the lots that are on the property that um, are actually where they're. We have some complaints of side yard things that Jason doesn't have authority over, but we would through a nuisance. You know, and high weeds and people not keeping their place up and trash and things like that that Jason can't do. Those are things that Ed could do. And I feel I feel like if he's if we're if I'm sending Jason an email and Ed's sending him an email saying, I'm out of this property, can you take care of this? He's more apt to do it for somebody that he knows is you know, a professional working for us in that field. I just get that feeling and and I'm, I will be having a talk with the folks down in rural zoning about our dissatisfaction. I've been told by other people that um, he claims he's just stretched too thin as well. But you know, we'll, we'll talk with the county about that, whether we 
they need to hire somebody else if there's that much going on or whether what the problem is. But um, for right now, we need, I feel like we, we owe it to our to residents to get these things under control for them. Um, I would say we're not talking about anything contractual with them. You know, they we try them on a, a trial basis, and you know, bring them on some see, see what he can do, see if he can get the results that he needs. Yeah, it's not just one one every now and then. And they're all legitimate complaints. So, uh, even uh, yes, sir, Mr. Beck. Yeah, hold on. I just has this ever been discussed with Brian Schneider, who is Jason's boss? I have not discussed it. Well, then that's why I, I, I thought my suggestion would be at the awesome. next meeting, ask Brian Schneider to come out here and stand at that podium to tell us what we can do to get a better reaction from him. Well, Jason, my store is not doing a yeah. good job. I mean, it, this is we're wasting county money. If he's on a payroll, what has he done for Miami Township in the last year? Right. I told well, he's not on the table. Yeah, it just and, and you know better. But we, right. we we do we do pay a stipend or something. Yeah, for, just in, in, for one time. Yeah, but it's not a per case. Yeah, but but, but so I, I had a generic conversation, um, just asking, and basically got a generic answer. Of they're doing the best they can. That was, like that was a month, months and months ago, um, but not right. recent. Yes, but, not, but I think not before recent, you hire somebody to do it. You don't have that Brian Schneider knows what's going on. So you don't have two people sure. approaching the same residence. Well, I agree with that. But I mean, I think we should put it on the record like you suggest. If you invite him to our meeting, as stable as we meet again in two weeks, the beginning of October. Yeah, I think a good idea to bring another yeah. person, but I think Brian Schneider ought to be advised of what we're doing. You know what you're and I'm okay with waiting two weeks. I, I just think that yeah, I've heard good things, good feedback from Cleves. I've heard good feedback from Aston. What's well, fine? Uh, the working relationship when Ed and Jason start to team up, and um, I agree with some of the things you're saying as far as we, sh we shouldn't have to, but at the end of the day, it's not getting done. And our yeah. residents deserve this to, to get this attention, and we, we don't have the bandwidth and capacity. With our, our current staff and trying to run all around uh, to to stay up on all of these these things that are just compiling and getting back back up on. I mean, Cindy just looked it up, and our the total of the payroll is only about five thousand a year. Five thousand a year. So that includes the uh, land use plan rework, which uh, I think Mr. Robinson will yeah. will touch on probably later. Um, so it's not like we're spending a lot of money on them, but it is difficult when we, we, we still expect them to do their job. Yeah. When we don't, don't get, get a response, response on them, yeah, it just keeps building and building and building and <laughs> So yeah. Well, well let's we're gonna we're gonna table October October beginning of October meeting and then you and find Brian Snyder down. Oh well. So we can put it on the record in our working meeting, and then we can bring it up again and talk about it and then he's he's a Feel the need to hire and we can move forward. Yeah. What's Brian's last name? Snyder. Uh, Paul Bradford, that's for time of day. So, uh, you good with that? Okay, okay last, last thing on my list today, um, just a, another reminder we, uh, Cindy and I have coffee with Jim and Cindy. Everybody's invited. Uh, we had a very nice gentleman stop in today. Um, that he used to come to the meetings and uh, hasn't been here for a while, but he never understood how our finances be worked. And I think we left here with a really good understanding of uh, what money is going to be spent on what. Um, as a, for instance, he did not know that we took care of township rooms. He thought the county took care of all the rooms. So he was amazed at what we spend on that and how many miles that we actually uh, are responsible for. So. Yeah, so we have a couple more of these. Um, we're going to be October 8th. 
9 to 11, and October 16th, 3 to 5. And then Cindy and I are talking about just uh, setting that up quarterly throughout the year, and uh, just so anybody can come in anytime. So uh, if we get one person every time, I'd be thrilled. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's all I have, unless you have questions for me. So, uh, any questions for Mr. Brett in the audience? Sorry, we'll be the one. Uh, to the fire department, Chief Schumann. Good evening. Um, so, for the month of August, there are a total of 205 um, calls came to the other jurisdictions. 226 hours of training, we had several overlapping incidents. It's like this last month, we had one we had lost control at the same time. Um, uh, staffing is, is on, on your report. We did get um, a nine thousand dollar grant from Marathon to help get fire hose accessories to fire trucks. Uh, so that is up to the press. Um, August eighth, we had Jack and Parish for back to school fest. We had the open house on August tenth, uh, which was a huge success. I bet there was over five or six or people that came through. All very positive. Got to talk about that stuff with some of the residents and the officers. If we can get stuff together in a short notice, we'd like to do it over on October 12th. Uh, but that has to be finalized. So we're working on getting some uh, participation from that stuff. I'll keep you posted all on that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that is. All I have. I think I'm going to try to sometime in the near future, October, like to get an October partner spread cost and do some sort of smoke detector blitz. And I'll do a bunch of stuff. So, um, any things coming up? And if anybody has any questions? Chief, do you want to go, do you want to go over this uh, wireless concept and the EMS highlights real quick? Sure. Um, we did. Went to Marshburg for well, each leg structure fire at 826. Um, there was a three bill in front of Skyline. Uh, we were there for several hours, probably like, clean that up. Uh, had a couple of strokes. We did, we did some stroke alerts with the hospitals. Both the patients had very positive outcomes. We continue to meet with the local EMS and regional committees to better our pre hospital care to include our self hospital housing protocol that we operate under. We're working with Medi-Cal in the state of Ohio. They have a new system that's going to help us um, re uh, or reimburse us some money, hopefully, from Medicaid and Medicare that we don't necessarily get now. Preliminary numbers are around 160,000 that we could get back just for the program. Captain Yanko is working on that directly with the Medicare and our US and the state of Ohio folks. So that'll be neat if we're able to bring in our future. Um, two of our full time folks who did med school and now they have passed all the registry and everything else. So they're, they're now able to act as paramedics. And we met with the Burger Nursing Home staff twice now just to build a relationship between us and them, build a report that they can call us on the phone or wherever we need to help them. I think we're going to do some training with them, that kind of stuff in the near future. So, uh, we're going to start up hybrid servicing again for the fall. So expect to see our crews down the road servicing and uh, helping hybrids for the winter season. Yeah. Any questions for the chief? Uh, yeah, just said, yeah, that's just fantastic, too. So appreciate all your efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Chief, take that Yes. Um, what is the uh, update on the new fire? What's it going to be? So, preliminary is it'll be done November 10th um, at the college. And then 
Both will, the folks who we ordered the fire truck through will get it sometime mid November, finish up the odds and ends stuff that they're responsible for, which we should have it here sometime first part of December. Is the blue is going to all that can change too. But there's two of them. Two fire trucks? Well, the one fire truck and the other fire truck in right. December. All right. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. Be a nice early Christmas too. Yeah. Senior Senator Mrs. Herbert. Okay, August activities. Um, August 6th, um, we had a, a group that went to Columbus with Shine Bright Tours, and uh, they witnessed. Um, craftsmanship from flag making, but had candy, corn made popcorn, um, and they saw the production of American only metal whistle production. And then in Columbus, of course, they had lunch at the Spencer restaurant. You go there, you go to Columbus, right? Um, August 13th, uh, finally we had our program on fraud and senior exploitation. We've been trying to do that for months, and it was fantastic. It was so good, and that group was Wonderful, and uh, he's a prosecuting, prosecuting attorney for Hamilton County. It was really good, and he did how to stop scammers, how they worked, uh, how to recognize red flags, how to protect ourselves. It was really, really, really good, and I'm so glad he did a really good turnout for that. Um, and I'll try to get up the lead here, maybe, you know, because it's such a good program in the short run, too. So yeah, it was fantastic. I was thrilled by it. But at the end of the program, I was a little freaked out. I'm gonna take my phone and my computer and toss them out the window. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it was really quite scary. But it's very informative. So I was very, very happy with that. Um, August 23rd, we had a lunch in Senior Forest at the Senior Center. Um, wonderful, they did such an amazing job. And we had like 75 people there. And yes, and we usually do all the cooking and everything when we were there, but we were like, oh my god, there's too many people to go for, so we got so good. <laughs> it was a really, really good time. And um, you don't know this, but I've been in contact with Harrison Trail, Harrison, and hopefully they'll be our first stop, um, you know, for our, our secret force. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you know, <laughs> You know, so, yeah, so, uh, 27th August, we had a special craft day. Um, a member has a special card made for class. August 30th, uh, we went to an outing to the CDC studio. The Birch Sports Studio has discovered the behind the scenes activities at the nation's first licensed public TV studio. Um, Upcoming. So, Miami Township's We Thrive Committee, along with uh, North Bend and Addison, were offering a fall prevention program for the citizens of Miami Township. Um, and people working cooperatively are actually doing the program. Yeah, let me read this so you guys kind of have a. It's called a Stepping On Program and is a fall prevention workshop that meets two hours a week for seven weeks. Trained leaders, Coach you to recognize your risk of falling and help you build the balance, strength, and practical skills skills you need to avoid a fall. So, like I said, it's seven weeks long. It starts October 10th on Thursdays from 10 to 12. It's no cost. Um, you have to be 60 and older register for the class. So it's pretty good. Um, more information on the website for that, or you can call the senior center. So, right, any questions for Ms. Herbert? Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Melvin. Thank you. How are you doing? How are you doing? Thank you. 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 This opportunity and they're setting all my email up and the phones and everything. <laughs> August, 
grass is actually kind of top. Or the corn foundations, the cemetery, can be raised down. We can see it with the rain, but we get topsoil in them. And that's a park trying to catch up on it. We stuff down there. We did pick up our new trailer. That's one of the things. The guys, the two new guys you hired are great. Younger guys want to learn to work. They're very good hires. Yeah, I had an email, I had all the stuff. Either. Ronnie was here in August, it was crazy. So the first week I do, Paul Beck was here when I started, Mr. Beck. Those are yeah. any any questions for Mr. Miller? Mr. Moreland? Uh, did they fill the position yet that was vacant when you got the upgrade and and the other gentleman took your spot? We're taking care of that. And that's in oh you're taking care We're of taking care of so that. they're not taking any more applications. I can't get it. No. <laughs> I know, Barry, you didn't go with your subject. Too late. Oh. Any questions? Any other questions? Oh, thank you for the and I want to thank Sissy. I just want to say congratulations. Like, yeah, thank you for it. It's, it's nice when you have new people you know, and you have folks yeah. like yourself that have dedicated a lot of years <laughs> to the, the township and see what's the the transition and so we're excited to have you in that role so appreciate that congrats again and look forward to working with you thank you thank you thanks all behind the the first one you got the first one out of the way yeah Jimmy, all right here's the long one safety mr hughes I'm going to oh, save it. I was going to save it. I'm going to show Jimmy up. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of, you know, I grew up with kind of old because you know, John was sitting here. Yeah. She and your folks works for her because I mean, I can remember them running around <laughs> the firehouse on this community and playing ball with them when they were young, young kids, and pretty proud of where they are now. They worked hard at Nelson's Handed to them, and uh, I think the township is in pretty good shape with those two last seven. They really did. Yes, thank you. We can we concur. Place we concur. Thank uh, you. So, get away from getting old. Uh, once the Hampton Safety Council meeting first one started, and so we get our credits for the some of our greetings, not that cost down a little bit. The topic was really kind of rough. It was uh, discussing if an OSHA inspector comes into your facility, how do you handle it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, inspector coming in, I was up there talking, but we, we, we deal with her. So we, we work with a different organization because we're part of the entity. And we've had her here before and they have completed inspections and done that monitoring. So we're well aware of what they do. Jim will have to be aware of what they do. But, uh, you yeah, know, we uh, are accident free. Uh, we finally got the one uh, injury that was on you know, disability for a short period of time. And uh, he's back, everything's good. We have uh, they have no accidents in the last quarter. So we're two for the year as far as uh, recordable pensions. I'm having a couple of problems now with uh, some of the planes being paid and workman's comp, but we're working through that. We've got a couple of guys that I think the hospital center for the loan agency has said it's in their insurance. It's like well, how that happened because you never gave me cards. So we're, we, I think we got that taken care of, but you know. We don't want any of our employees to get hurt. We want to make sure we take care of it. Uh, the uh, tax meetings in March. 730? Yeah, 730. Uh, so, uh, but things are, as far as my side, things are going good. Yeah. Guys are working hard, the gals are working hard, they're working safely. I mean, that's all we really can ask. 
was, you know, pretty much that friend of me was dead. You know, I did, I did have a concern. I thought the writer earlier, I said that I might get some safety belt, seat belt on that chair over there for Jim and when to fall out of it. It's pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> all right, any questions for Mr. Hughes? Uh, that wasn't long. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. You said short. Oh. All right. So, what are you ready? Me, Connor, Mr. Barber. First, I just want to say welcome to Wayne and just thank him for the open line communication. You know, we just had a chance to talk about how he wanted to handle maintenance requests and how we would handle park rentals and just if he would do things the same or different and so it was nice to know just moving forward exactly how we do things and I really appreciate that. I look forward to working with you because it's always an adventure. With you. Um, so, so far for 2024, we have done 156 events January through August. Um, that's a lot of events, but looking ahead, it is most probably going to be even busier. So far on the books from September through the end of December, we have 109 events on the books, and I anticipate that will definitely grow. Um, that, if it stayed at 109, <laughs> we would have 265 total events for the year. At 265 events with an 80 guest average, that means that 21,200 community members and visitors would come to our facilities. I think that's very impressive. And it just makes it even more important to keep the line of communication open. I know how busy you are, but you do a phenomenal job maintaining everything as to everyone that's worked there. So we just need to keep that up. Um, also looking ahead, exciting things, December 6th, our winter wonderland, where you know we'll have several hundred people come through. And then I'm very excited that looking into next year, March 7th, 8th, and 9th, we were granted a train display by Queen City Railers. The only other tri-state area that does the full-size display is in Lakota. So the committee came and looked at our space and realized that they could do the full display here. So bring it something that the east side has. <laughs> so I'm excited. But anyway, um, I'm looking forward to closing out the year. It's hard to believe it's already September, but exciting things happen. So that's good. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. Any questions for Mr. Sorry, any questions for Mr. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good job. I think All right, you. Uh, Clark, Mr. Clark, do you have anything for JJ? I have not talked to him. I've been talking to Wayne a lot about what's going on down in Westport, but I know the baseball's wrapping up and we have uh, tryouts to this end it up, right? Ended up with a 16 and under, 14 and under, then the little guys have all did their tryouts already. So, but I know they're going to be trying to get practices in and stuff. I know that before the weather turns real cold. So, that water line's done. They're just tested tomorrow. So, that goes to be open. That's awesome. Yeah. Good, 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 good. All right, IT, Mr. Taylor, you got anything to say, Mr. Fry? Yeah, I got the, the what you want to get to. I can, I can hit that, the highlights. Um, actually, I'm going to clip that slide. So, yeah, there's a few outstanding items that he's pointing on. Um, Couple leader things that I didn't know about because they're, they're small enough I can approve. Uh, station 68 computer replacement for the basement, uh, $900. Station 70 radio room monitor replacement, uh, $125. Uh, I had him get us a, a price on a new camera and a microphone system because what we get recorded here is not a very good quality. and I thought it was just we replaced the lights. My recollection is that he had some very large numbers with the proposal that was not comfortable with those numbers. So, uh, table said that we continue to look at the 
So, I wasn't. I see that, so I asked them to get a couple others. We're, we're also looking at cameras for station 70 and station 69. Um, the chief would like to be able to do more training without having to have the people come from those stations up here, leaving those areas having to be covered from up here. So we're gonna we're gonna work with the chief. We're gonna get that done so they can have better communication between the, the meeting rooms so that they can do their training and stay on staff at the station they're assigned to. I um, think that's great. But today's technology is no reason to do Um one of the things that was an issue right before the meeting tonight uh, that's on his, his list, finding a door lock control replacement. Um Pending review right now, and did you want to address that? No, we're here. I gave it to my Okay. So, uh, sure. Um, so this is something we've been dealing with for quite some time. It's getting progressively worse, and stressing, um, you know, with the staff. So, uh, door locks and camera system. Um, and we we can have this discussion. June 19th, and I would like to revisit it and um, see if the board is uh, supportive of allowing the authorization to Brett to negotiate with Mercata, Brett, and Brett, and allow them to negotiate in the best interest of the township to the best of the device and camera system. Is that sufficient? So I'll make a motion that you authorize Mr. Brett to negotiate on our behalf. I'll second. Mr. Volrand? Yes. Mr. Blandon? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Sure. So um, thank you for that. Um, I do want to want to mention we had a, a large power outage over the weekend. Oh, hold on just a second. I'm sorry. No, okay. So do we need we need approvals on what you just read into the record? Do we we need to take care of that, right? Yeah. Oh um everything oh, that's not included. That's it. We included no, it. Um no, the, these are specific items you brought up. Yeah, um, well, I think we need everything that's, I'm not Comfortable with the camera, and that's the only thing that's ever above the you know, spending of it. So, but if you want to approve the, oh, no, no, the other two, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I, so, I just go ahead. I just want to make sure we, we get the best camera for the best price. That's, that's fine. Go so, um, so, so we are dealing with that. No, okay. No, I'm just, 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 just more of an I was just talking about these two issues. Okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, I did. I did want to mention what the power outage last weekend when we switched from when the power went out and we went to our generator. The computer for the door locks <coughs> went down. Tim had to come in, reboot the computer, reset it because we had an event here. Um, and then, of course, later on when the power came back on, and you know, we switched from generator to power. She had to come back in on Sunday and reset the lock for, for Sunday. So, again, thank you, Kim, for doing that. So, and thank you to the fire department for keeping Barry and I updated on what was going on, uh, you know, with the power situation. And um, our new system will be a cloud based system, so we'll be able to fix those things from home. Um, there's a few other things on here that are just work list, but other than that, I think it's something that we need to discuss. So I think we can move on unless you have questions. Okay. Sounds good. We want to move on to uh, new business. <laughs> yeah. Can we move on to new business? Yeah. So first item I have is um, there was some uh, we talked about what the previous administrator. And Reed was authorized to do hiring wise. And I have 
two things that I would like to be able to do. Uh, first, I would like to be able to work with um, with Perry and the um, event center, hire part time event people without having to wait and go through the board. Uh, these are part time people; they don't add any cost to the uh, to the budget. Uh, this gets for four people to four pull from, and while we're talking about part time people, the event center most of the are either older retired folks, if we can get them, uh, or their younger high school kids, and to pay for drug testing for those positions that may only work a few hours. They don't use any equipment. They don't have any power tools that they use. Um, I know that back when you decided to drug test everybody, everybody, but I really don't see the benefit of paying for drug tests for those folks. Right. So I would like to just have your blessing to make those hiring decisions and then bring you the list when we made them for those part time positions. And I would like to eliminate the, the need for uh, drug testing for that. For sure. All right. Do we. Does anybody want to entertain a motion for that? Yeah, I just got one piece on there. Um, with the, okay, it's all over with, uh, with the drug testing aspect. There is an extra code. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just pre pre employment. Second, Mr. Warren? Yes. Mr. Lyon? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. So, next item under new business um, is um, actually something that I'm very happy to uh, just tell everybody. Uh, in talking with, with White about becoming our public works director, he's been our assistant public works director for ever here. And uh, we have a, a gentleman. On staff, uh, Ryan Hoffman, who also applied for that position, um, who said he would be proud to move up and uh, work with Wayne. Um, they already, in just a week, um, they've already been working together in trade. And um, I would like for you to approve Ryan Hoffman for the position of Assistant Public Works Director. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to rehire Ryan Hoffman to replace Wayne Miller in the Leaders Department as Public Works Director. I'll start. Mr. Walry? Yes. Mr. Blaine? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Yeah, I could just speak to that. I could not do it. Yes, I could have made yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Brennan, finish? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, anything from the public? We had someone request to uh, view the agenda and they, they were not able to make it. Anything else from anyone here? You'll like to come up and Come up to the podium and state your name and, and go ahead and address the board. <clears throat> uh, my name is Barry and I'm on 5612. Uh, just have a question, probably the director for the uh, staff here with Jim Brad. I've been coming to these meetings for quite some time and I do try to take notes of things. And it's great that we move forward with the Parked down by the uh, firehouse, you know, what we call that the back park. Yeah. What I'm getting at is, yeah, yeah, I thought that we moved forward and we had a final price on that. Am I correct? It was well over 600000 That was the contract group and the equipment. Well, and we approved that maybe two months ago. Well, I noticed the contractors came in there and began to do it, move forward. It looks great. Question I had, I came to the meeting two weeks ago and I should have said something then and I kept my mouth shut. We approved an additional 32,000 and some odd dollars for play equipment. And I'm thinking, that's great. But how did we miss that $32,000 one month prior? When that's the question that I'm coming up with, how did we approve this large amount of money, which is okay, we all approved it, but within 30 days, we upped at thirty-two thousand dollars, and there has to be there. There's quite obvious a mistake there. Am I right or wrong? 
There, there was because that thirty-two thousand dollars were two sets of items that were listed as an alternate, and but, so they were an option. That would probably be a better term than alternate. But, so they weren't included in the original. We had talked with them about getting it. They didn't add it into their total. They added it in separate as an alternate, so we didn't have to choose that if we didn't pick that. We intended to pick that. We just didn't catch that it was an alternate and not included in the original. So, so it was a form of a mistake. Yes. So what does that bring the total cost up to? Can anybody bring that up? The test were up to over 700. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you're willing to come over to my office, I can tell you that. Uh, that's the only I don't have it. I just thought that was odd. We made a mistake there. It was 30 some thousand. 30 some thousand is thousand a lot of money. If we make mistakes, we're going to make them elsewhere. I'm making this play, Aaron. Well, it's. I appreciate your. I appreciate your attention um, and some of your questions. And I, I also think that it's good that we're keeping track of the total cost of some of these projects because it's easy when you're spending thirty thousand a year, twenty thousand a year, and ten thousand a year, you know, for it to just win win win. It's like okay, well, why did this end up costing us? So I appreciate those questions. All right, anything else for the All right, um, comments from the board, Mr. Bergson. Um. Busy. Uh, we uh, attended the Greater Society Chamber State of the Region um, event uh, where uh, townships, cities, villages, um, folks from uh, all over the, the area um, attended and talked about you know, housing and the economy and uh, inflation and all kinds of things that are impacting us. And it was it was striking to me how everybody's familiar with cities, everyone's familiar with villages, but um, you know. Townships are kind of an anomaly, anomaly community, and uh, um, there wasn't a whole lot known about them. So it was eye opening to have to try to talk with them and get a little more attention on townships because for me, the townships are kind of the lifeblood of, of some of these counties, and uh, it's important that we focus on some of that stuff. Um, Actually, uh, had the honor of uh, attending a builders club um, event just earlier today. Mr. Beck was there and, and others, and uh, it's great to see our school was a key club in the builders club and kind of uh, encouraging future leaders uh, to get involved. On Sunday, I actually attended St. Joseph's. Um, they had a, a dedication to their new cross and uh, landscape area and two of our Eagle Scouts. Um, which we have a partnership and this board is works very closely with our scouts. Um, uh, took that on as their Eagle Scout project and one of the trees that was struck there um, and uh, at the, the field uh, was struck by lightning and they carved it down and used that same wood to erect this cross. Um, and the Knights of Columbus, uh, I believe, uh, donated $4,000 and one of other. And then these the young boys went out and solicited and got I think it would end up being fifteen thousand dollars or so um, for this. So um, great, great to see again these you know generations where you're questioning <laughs> where they're you know whether they're going to be in for the long haul, and it's great to see you know some of those kids. Um, our land use committee meeting was rescheduled. Uh, and there's nothing we can do about that. Um, Chris, he works for Hamlin County. Uh, came down with uh, an illness, and so I know that we announced at the last meeting that that was already scheduled on the books. Unfortunately, that had to be rescheduled. It's tentatively is it Monday or Tuesday? I think Tuesday, Tuesday of this coming week. Um, so um, we're going to move forward with that and trying to approve the five year plan. Um, I attended a, a 9 11 dedication, uh, um, a, you know, speaker that spoke, and he was talking about his. His 20 year old daughter, and uh, he said he was talking about you know, how we all know where we were at on 9 11 and when the hours were struck. And he said, Holy cow, my daughter is only 20, she, she wasn't born then. So, uh, you know, I, I thought that that was great to continue to remind folks of the significance of that. Um, and uh, uh, I think that might.
might be it, but uh, was there anything else? Um, uh, I can't remember. Yeah. 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 All right, Mr. Laura. Yeah, just uh, one last piece. Uh, on Saturday, Howard Cheever, you know, very, very uh, that kind of resident of the township, finally put the rest. I know he had donated his body to sign, but uh, uh, he put the rest of the paper with his white body. And uh, I was speaking with his son, Chris, who teaches at the academy. I don't know exactly how hard it was, but uh, he's very, very cold. Uh, love the township. And, and uh, uh, anybody that you know, was involved in Howard, he was a really good guy, very, uh, very much uh, donated a lot to the police state, making sure that uh, it's had what he needs its own. Jim and I will be working on the budget for next year, so you guys have anything make sure we get it. Um October 18th, you guys can get that back to us. The big items, fire department's a little different. They need a little more. <laughs> Line items for us, but in I know with the levy, can you do one? I think it's in the emergency. Let's not do that. I've been working on it. Yeah, I figured you would. Or Wayne, if you need to talk to me, if you need to know more what to do in percentage, just let us know. Yeah, reach out to Jim. So we go for the and we got this. Because uh, Ronnie had like a meal cool where it might be 25, 26. No, the rotation because it's a major equipment. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's all good. Cool. All right, thank you. So I just wanted to wish you congratulations to you, even though I didn't already get the word on the record. So I wish you congratulations again. I'm glad for you. And, and I agree with Mr. Hughes. It's great seeing both of you grew up here, residents here, or was residents here. And, and you know, you're bracing the family. So it is, it's a, I think it's a win win for the council. And you're great, great qualified to put to be for your position. So I'm glad you're both here. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. So we have a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Walrath? Yes. Mr. Blaine? Yes. Mr. Okay. Yes. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Thank you.